No Skill Customs. Hey, this is Bert, and on this episode of No Skill Customs, we're going to take a look at a couple No Skill dioramas for the Mandalorian TV show. So, spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen season two, we're going to do a couple scenes that uh, that you can do without any painting, no cutting, nothing like that. Just scenes you can make on your own, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Oh, I sound like an elementary school teacher. I'm sorry. Okay, but anyways, oh, oh what's this? Oh, look at that. It's uh, it's my brother Nipper. I expected it to be Pokey. You know, my good friend Pokey from my other videos. Just finished my custom razor crest if you want to see it. Really? All right, so he's saying that he has made a razor crest from the Mandalorian that's more accurate than the HasLab project they're about to release. This I've got to see. He'd been talking about getting a uh, 3D printer, so it's probably not a no-skill uh, diorama here. But let's see if he'll send me some pics. Okay, I guess he's telling me I have to go in person. So I'm going to... I'm gonna head over to his house, and uh, while I do that, you guys can uh, you guys can check out these no skill dioramas. So the scene we're gonna try out is this skirmish at Navarro, and uh, because uh, we're going for like the feeling of it, we're actually gonna add many different moments from that skirmish, from when uh, Moff Gideon lands to when IG Eleven shows up and also when they bring out the E-Web Blaster. So we're gonna kinda of have all that stuff together as one scene. Now remember, this is a no skill custom, so uh, we're going to go for the impressionist scene. We're not gonna to try to be entirely accurate. We're just gonna look for toy parts and other things that you can add to uh, your setup to make it feel like that moment in the show without actually having it look exactly like that moment. So we're gonna start things off with some fabric. Normally I do uh, cardboard with foam underneath but I found this fabric that looks kind of like dirty sand so I'm going to use that which does will require figure stands for the figures. Now um, I'm going to use next the Battlefield playset by World Peacekeepers Toys. I, uh, I find these at garage sales all the time but I think they're sold on a regular basis just at, at big lots. Battlefield playset is pretty tall you might want something shorter be more accurate and cheaper. They also make a military assault unit which uh, will work pretty well. Now let's get to the vehicles. Uh, first of all, I have the, the TIE Fighter from Solo. That is going to act as Moff Gideon's TIE Fighter. And uh, I took the wings off so it looked like they were folded. That was the closest thing I could come up with. But in hindsight, uh, if, you, if you watch the, the video, you'll see they're off. In hindsight, I think I'd just leave them on and have it standing upright. Then, of course, you have the Vintage Collection Imperial Troop Transport. Nothing you have to do there. Just set it on up. And uh, after that, we have IG, IG-11, sorry, shows up uh, in the white speeder bike. So for that, you can use one of the speeder bikes from the, the Hoth speeder bike patrol set. Also, um, you might already have a white speeder bike. Don't go out and buy one. The Legacy Imperial Walker, the Legacy Adat, had, uh, came with a white speeder bike. Plus, it has better details and handlebars. Now it's time to kind of fill up this space with some details. First of all, you want to kind of disguise the fact that this, uh, the battlefield playset or whatever you're using is meant for like real, you know, earth military toys. Um, and so I did that by adding the door from the uh, Power of the Force 2 uh, Death Star Chasm playset and an archway from my Jabba's Palace playset. Using a couple of those will kind of throw it off, make it feel more alien and a little less earthly, okay? Then you want to just have some random stuff lying around like in the show. So you might want to use the crate that came with uh, the Sieg 3 po Attack of the Clones Saga Collection uh, version. He came with a little crate. Also, same, uh, same series, Anakin as a peasant came with a little crate too that I... I love using for stuff like that. Over the years, I've also acquired a bunch of these uh, Playmobil crates. Uh, some some are red, some are black. And I have this thing. I think it's a Chap May accessory, some sort of military-looking box thing. Another thing I have is from the 30th anniversary collection, Luke Skywalker. He, obviously, he's got a moisture evaporator, but there's nothing that really looks like a moisture evaporator there. You don't want it to feel too tattooing-like. So I pop out all the... Uh, the little side pieces and the top piece and it just makes for an interesting little um, 
I don't know, sculptural element in the background there. Also, uh, there's some barrels. In the 90s, Disney had Indian Jones toys in the parks, and uh, they had some cool barrels. And then uh, in 2008, Hasbro made some Indian Jones toys with cool barrels also. Also, there's um, these kind of gray platform things laying around. So for that, I used um, some Fortnite pieces that I got in, uh, in a garage sale. Then you have the E-Web Blaster. I actually use my Power of the Force 2 E-Web Blaster. Works just fine. Okay, it's one of the better Power of the Force 2 items. Then we got to talk about the figures. For IG-11, they haven't made a 3 and 3 quarter inch one yet, so the obvious choice is IG-88 from the Vintage Original Trilogy Collection. He was also released a couple times after that. Um, all, you just take the bandolier off, or if you're like me and you found one uh, at a garage sale that was missing the bandolier, perfect. Okay, then you just got to come up with a backpack for him. I used Ray's backpack at first, but now, uh, since taking these photos, I've actually gotten my own Grogu figure, so I tried stuffing him into one of the backpacks from the Clone Troopers from the Clone Wars cartoon. He doesn't really fit. If you wanted to cut it down, it's my kid, so I can't. But if you wanted to cut it down, maybe you could make him fit in there somehow. Um, I was thinking of using the Yoda Dagobah backpack, but it just seems too bulky to fit on the front of his body. So I don't really have a perfect solution for that yet. Then, of course, you have your Stormtroopers. You know, just about any Stormtrooper will do if it's been... I would say from the 30th anniversary collection or more recent than that. Obviously, I have my favorites. Personally, it's the, the newest vintage collection Han Solo Stormtrooper. I think is superb, but I, I'm not going to go around and buy 20 of those uh, when I have so many other Stormtroopers to begin with. Then, of course, you need some Death Troopers. For the Death Trooper, I use the vintage collection one. It was also a 3.75-inch Black Series Death Trooper. Love those. I just take off the... The extra pauldron and stuff. Finally, you need your Moff Gideon figure. He was a vintage collection figure uh, that just came out in the last couple months. I also have a like a clear thing I found to elevate my IG-11 on the on the, the the speeder bike. You could just rest him on the ground or find something of your own. I don't even really know where that came from. All right, now let's put this all together. Next scene is a uh, sand crawler scene. Here it is all complete. And uh, I started with the fabric f that I used in the last scene, only this time I used the, the fuzzy side out rather than the back side. And uh, then I used the original trilogy collection Jawa sand crawler. I uh, have in front of it Grogu, or the child. And uh, he's from the Din Djarin and the child's. Uh, Walmart exclusive set, but you might want to hold out for the child figure that came on his own because you get a better pram. I actually, for my pram, since I don't have that yet, it just came out though, I heard. Uh, for mine, I just used the uh, little floaty chair from uh, Revenge of the Sith Yoda. Then I have an assortment of Jawas. I'm not going to read them all off. You can just pause that shot if you want one. Um, but you might also want to hold out for some actual off world Jawas with the red eyes. Uh, he is coming out. I mean, at least with with the uh, the Razor Crest toy, but there's some rumors that uh, the off world Jawa would be a single release as well. Probably somewhat different, but uh, that might be coming soon too. Then for the Mandalorian, I actually used the carbonized Mandalorian figure, but only because I could not find the Vintage Collection 166. I never ran into it, um, so I don't have it. The latter is from Wedge Antilles X Wing, the Legacy Collection X Wing. Um, if you can't, I, I understand, you don't want to buy a whole X-Wing just for a ladder. So uh, a lot of places like HoleInTheGroundPro.com and some other 3D printing places make uh, some ladders. Uh, this, the one from Wedge and Tilly's X-Wing is kind of nice because it fits really well into that, that little hole in the side of the, sa the sand crawler. To finish off the diorama, on top of the sand crawler I put the, uh, the crane from the C-3PO with Droid Factory assembly line set. Uh, I thought that looks pretty nice as some of the machinery that the Jawas have up on the top. Then for the uh, kind of canopy thing, I take the top off of a uh, World Peacekeepers Lookout Tower set. And that I thought that worked pretty nicely. Just don't break it like I 
but broke mine. And there you have it, the Jawa Sandcrawler chase scene. And uh, next we're going to do one of the most iconic images from all season one at the end of the first episode. It uses parts from the other two scenes we did. You have the archway from the Jabba's Palace playset. You have the crates that we used in the Navarro scene. You've got IG-88 playing uh, the part of IG-11 there on the floor. And you have um, the Mandalorian and Grogu and our little makeshift pram for Grogu that's going to, you know, be the fill-in until we actually find the pram that's out in stores right now. The last thing I did was just put a white sheet of computer paper in my archway and uh, lit it from the back. Put some lights back there. That's it for our no skill customs. Let's see what my brother made for his razor crest. All right, here we are. Here's Nipper's house. Can't wait to see that super accurate razor crest. Yeah, I don't see him yet. Usually he comes right out, but uh, yeah, maybe he'll show up. He'll be out in a second. Just, oh, oh, hey, hey, Nipper. Hey, so, uh, like what you done with the place? Gray and gray, it's, that's pretty nice. So, so where's this, uh, where's this setup of yours? I'm really, I'm really interested in seeing it. Right there. Right here? What? On the table? This looks like a bunch of debris and, and the, and the Mandalorian and... Wait a second. This is the Razor Crest after it's been blown up. <sighs> yeah. I get it. Tell me that isn't exactly what the Razor Crest looks like. I get it. Not cool, Nip. Not cool.